Welcome to Whitetail Season here at AmericanHunter.org. I'm really excited this week to be able to bring you the news that we found the third of our four bucks on the hit list. Actually, I wasn't the one that found this deer. I didn't film him. The family and I went on a houseboat vacation up into northern Minnesota. So I was gone for the better part of a week. It's always been a dream of mine. You know, I've read it in hunting magazines and fishing magazines for years about these houseboat trips and pulling the fishing boat along behind and, you know, using the houseboat as a base camp. It was a great relaxing time, but it was some good news that I received when I got home. Uh, one of our producers, Greg Clements, had been out on the farm filming in one of the spots where we'd been seeing these other two really good bucks, and the G5 buck made his first appearance of the year. And he may have been coming out all along. Greg moved the tree stand location just a little bit that he was filming from, and that was just enough to see into a different part of that field. And the buck came out early. Uh, he's definitely put on more inches. He's bigger than he was in 2010. Uh, this is a deer that I'm really excited to hunt because last year he was so visible. And in the whitetail world, if they do that, they usually don't last too long. So I don't believe it's really a, a situation where the deer gets so much smarter. I think they have certain personalities and some bucks move a lot. I mean, he was everywhere as a three-year-old. And then last year we figured he was four. And again, he was all over the place. I think I almost got him four different times. One of them was during the late season last year. Based on what I know, which isn't that much, we're gonna go up this valley to one of the spots we hunted quite a bit in November. And hopefully there's a little bit of standing corn there. Hopefully there's some corn left in that. Uh, my guess is that most of it's been fed out. But uh, it should be the best chance we've got of seeing this buck that we call the G5 buck, which is a deer that, he's a fully mature, big bodied buck. We've got some daytime pictures of him scattered around the farm. So hopefully he's moving down through this valley. He was coming straight toward the tree stand and I had to reposition my body and I made a little bit of a mistake in the tree. Rather than just swinging my head underneath the harness strap, I turned you know, 270 degrees or so in the tree stand and tried to go the back way around to get ready for the deer on the other side of the tree. In so doing, uh, with the cold temperatures and, and such, I mean the noise just gets so amplified. The deer heard my feet scraping on the, on the stand platform and he locked up at 40 yards. It was a painful moment. Turn my body on the tree stand, but that's disappointing. I mean, that's the, for sure the biggest buck that we've had within bow range in a long time. And uh, just let him slip away. In some ways, you know, looking back on it now, I'm glad that we didn't get him because clearly he's bigger now. So hopefully it continues into his five-year-old season. And it'll be an interesting little test. We'll bring it to you as the season goes on because typically the five-and-a-half-year-old deer is kind of their ghost year. They're somewhat visible as three- and four-year-old deer, then they just fall off the face of the earth when they're five. And we're hoping, you know, in the case of these other two deer on the hit list, you know, the double G4 buck and the buck that we're calling big, that trend starts to reverse itself when they reach six years old because those two bucks are six and what we can tell the g5 buck we really believe is, is a five-year-old so in coming episodes we'll talk more about where we're going to try to get this deer another one of the sub themes of this season is going to be using trail cameras to figure out which bucks are killable and we're going to start it right now with this g5 buck he was a deer that was showing up a lot on the trail cameras last season during the day and that sort of gave us a little uh, preview of his behavior uh, the fact that he was this daytime roamer, we sort of knew that going into it because we had a lot of trail camera pictures in October of this buck during the daylight. So that's something we're going to be kind of monitoring this year too. We'll bring you along as we sort of really try to unravel which bucks on the farm, especially of these four that we're after, which ones are more killable, you know, using the trail cameras to help us figure that out. So that's it for this week. Uh, come back again next week and we'll start hatching the plan of how we're going to, or how I'm going to try to kill this G5 buck. I appreciate you joining me here on Whitetail Season. We'll see you back here again next week at AmericanHunter.org.